Hey everyone, it's me, Brian. Just wanted to come in real quick before the video here and just give you a big thank you for watching and subscribing to the channel. I also wanted to give you another thank you to my Patreon supporters, my top tier supporters. As a thank you to the community, I'm gonna be giving away three months free of Spotify. All you have to do to enter is look for the secret code that will pop up later in the video and then email me that code and my email will be down in the description below. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's me, Brian with Destructive Media, back with another reaction video for you all today. Today I'm going to be reacting to two explanation videos for uh, Interlude Shadow by BTS. Um, if you are new to the channel or if you haven't watched it yet, um, I've already done a reaction to this song. Um, I've done a music video reaction and a lyric video reaction, um, and I broke down the lyrics on dual set. Uh, so. Uh, if you haven't yet, go check out that video. Um, but like I said, for now, we're going to be watching uh, two explanation videos for Interlude Shadow. Um, like I said, I already broke down the lyrics. Um, I already kind of have my own interpretation of the song. Um, but I like to look at other people's interpretations of the song. And, um, you know, people that might know more about, like, you know, Jungianism um, and obviously BTS more than I do. Uh, so we'll just flip on over to my other screen here and we will watch uh, two explanation videos from X Celeste and Bookish Theories. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we're going to enjoy them because they both uh, make amazing content. All right, we got the video pulled up here. Uh, I'm going to pop on my headphones. Uh, like I always say, if you can pop on a pair of headphones yourself. Uh, so yeah, first let's just watch this X Celeste video. Uh, and then after this, we'll watch the Bookish Theories video on the explanation of interlude shadow what's up with this panda bear here <laughs> guess we'll find out welcome back to my channel what's up flare squad welcome back to my channel and to another theory slash explanation video this time we're gonna go over suga's interlude shadow now there were so many symbolic scenes and deep meaning mm. lyrics, so let's get started. For sure. We're first introduced to a sinister scene with Suga in the middle and these hooded figures facing a door of what looks like a hotel. And you could see the exit sign above Suga as if he's trying oh. to leave that area. Now this could represent how- I missed that. I didn't notice that exit sign. How they feel when they're at hotels. It seems as if someone is always outside their door waiting for them. Now, when you put it that way, yeah, that is creepy. Someone mentioned that this doorway behind Suga looked really familiar and they could be linked to Anish Kapoor's Svayam. Svayam is a Sanskrit word meaning something that is created out of itself. So the block of wax squeezes through the door frame and leaves some of itself behind. It's as if it's skidding itself as it goes through the door, Kapoor said. If they were trying to reference uh. this, it could represent how the members are losing a bit of themselves as they go through everything as celebrities. Shards of the mirror comes together to reveal another sugar on the other side, but this time wearing lighter colored clothes. The mirror is showing us another side of him, which could represent the past him as he repeats. I wanna be left. Yeah. These were things he wanted before BTS grew, as they were big dreams to him, and he wondered every day how far he would go. You can see him run across the hall and into the stage and limelight that Shiga is currently in. He noticed the shadows under his feet become bigger and even tried to run away from it. He didn't realize how lonely it would be and that his leap could also be his fall. Now, these lyrics were really deep and expressive. and This is how Shiga truly feels right now. He accomplished all his big dreams, but has now realized how scary and lonely it is. You'll see all the hooded figures run towards a door to get through, and Shika says, I run, but the shadows follow. Now the shadow he's talking about refers to Jungarian psychology and is in the book that they've referenced called Jung's Map of the Soul. The shadow is an unconscious aspect of the personality, which the conscious ego does not identify itself. It is the collection of repressed aspects of our identity. Yep. Now, Jung believed that in order to truly grow as a person, one must see such willful blindness to one's shadow 
and attempt to balance it with the persona. Once we become more aware of these dark aspects of ourselves, we must honor them and find a way to integrate them into our life. In failing to do so, one will become weak and scattered. One cannot serve two inner drives without dissipating his strength and energies. The shadow must become part of one's conscious personality. So you see them break through and start running towards Shiga. This such cool thought theory. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, because like, you know, I feel that way. Um, you know, like, you know, when you're dwelling on things um, about the past or maybe things you've done or have been done to you, um, you don't feel good. You know, it doesn't help. You don't get better. Um, sometimes you got to embrace things. My cat really wants to come in right now. He's putting his paw into the door and meowing at me. Um, but he's bad. He'll walk across my keyboard. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, the, the imagery is amazing. Um, I did not know anything about the wax thing or the doorway. Um, I thought it was like blood or something. I had no idea what that was. Um, but yeah, like that's a cool metaphor for them, like losing themselves as they go through fame. Super cool. Scene itself looks like a horror zombie movie of some type. Mm -hmm. And a shadow swallows him up and turns him into a monster. This scene represents the stage, and of course, the people with the phones recording and taking pictures could represent the fans. Now, he's speaking out about fear by saying, Don't let me shine. As he flies higher and closer to the light, the shadow grows bigger. For example, if you're lying against the floor, your shadow is smaller, but as you get close to the light, it will cast a bigger shadow behind you. And the light represents fame in this song. You'll notice the sketches that pop up, and guess I did what? Not. They're not random sketches. It's hard to They're see them. from the comeback trailer of Are You Late 2. And the instrumentals... Not the last forever. You only live once. Sound familiar? All of a sudden, instrumentals in the song switches up and Shiga's voice gets rusty and deeper. I love this part of the song. It is so good. It's just perfect. This is the shadow speaking to him, saying, I am you, you oh. are me, and now he knows. They'll clash within the single body and he could never detach from his shadow. So the shadow is trying to get him to accept him. And now this scene could either represent himself, Minyungi in the crowd and his BTS persona, Suga on stage, or the person in the crowd could be his shadow. I mean, it does seem like it is a shadow in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a couple of scenes that remind me of RM's persona music video, such as the mirrors, which represent personas and all the different masks they wear. And then there's the stage, which represents their stage oh, yeah. identities. So the song and music video represents the shadow, their fear, and them realizing they need to accept it. And it is pretty sad to hear, but this is how they truly feel. And it is their way to express how they feel by using lyrics and visuals to tell us the story. And this was an amazing music video and loved the lyrics. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to click that like button and also join the Flare Squad by subscribing, you guys. Thanks for watching. I have already subscribed to her, but I will hit the like button because that was a very well done video. Um, on the shorter side, usually her videos are longer, but you know, um, she picked up on stuff I did not. Um, and she knows BTS much better than I do. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm excited to see what Bookish Theories is going to have. Um, I've only watched one video from them, and it was very comprehensive. Um, I have already subscribed to them. I think you should as well, and I'm going to like their video even before I watch it, because I know it's going to be good. Hello, and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's oh, video, I would like to talk about BTS. We don't need the captions on if they're not...
in my language. This interlude shadow, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of both the lyrics and the music video. Now, much like we were expecting, Shadow features Suga and deals with the shadow concept that was foreshadowed ever since Intro Persona came out. The fact that this is an interlude is immediately really interesting because it kind of suggests that Persona and Seven should be seen as part of the same story. This makes sense because by ending Persona with Dionysus, BTS metaphorically freed the shadow we are now seeing in the interlude. In Jung's theories, the shadow is the part of us that we repress in our unconscious. It represents our fears, our anger, our weaknesses, everything we want to hide because we are ashamed of it. But now the shadow is free, so what we are seeing here is the representation of Suga's most intimate feelings and worries. At the beginning, the video opens with a shot of a corridor that shows Jungi and Seven Shadows standing in front of closed doors. As we'll see in a second, these figures could be interpreted in different ways. So for now, let's focus on Yungi. In the scene, Suga, which in this case is playing the shadow of himself, is standing in front of an exit door that turns into a cracked mirror. Right off the bat, this is very interesting because by comparing the exit door with the broken reflection, BTS is showing us that the door to their unconscious is now cracked and we are able to see inside of it. Wow. This links us right back to the quote from Carl Jung that Nam Jun mentioned at the Golden Disc Awards 2020. The dream is the small hidden door in the deepest and most intimate sanctum of the soul, which opens to that primeval cosmic night that was so long before there was conscious ego and will be so far beyond what a conscious ego could ever reach. Now a lot of people were obviously very confused by this quote, but now we are seeing the perfect representation of what that sentence implies. In the quote, Jung basically says that the dream is a door to the soul from which we can see the most primitive side of ourselves, that side that is that was part of us before the ego came along. Now, according to Jung, the ego is the part of us that represents reason. So before that, what we had was only what connected us to the universe itself, which is the shadow that we are now seeing. Back in Persona, Aram asked himself who he was. And by asking this question, he opened the door to the soul the shadow is now standing in front of. Since Jung is awake in the scene, Shadow Jung... Want to say something about Will Smith being there? I'm not gonna. He is staying on his side of the door. But as soon as he is I unconscious, the shadows come out. And since Persona opened the door, now the shadows follow him everywhere he goes. On a metaphorical level, this means that once you start questioning your identity, you may find parts of yourself that you don't like and that you struggle to control. But as we see in both the video and the song, BTS's shadow is also connected to their calling, which implies a conflict between who they want to be and who they are. This conflict is made evident even by the song itself. If you go back and listen to Shadow, the instrumental is actually sampled off the intro to What Are You Late To, which is an album that is constantly referenced throughout the video for this specific reason. You see, back in the intro, BTS said that since you only live once, you have to live your life as you want, because everything you did will make you into the person that you will become. In Shadow, we see the outcome of this philosophy, but as it turns out, the reality they are living now is very different from the dreams they had back then. At the beginning, the song opens with Suga stating what his ambitions are. He says that he wants to be a rap star, to be king, to have everything he wants and be on top. And this is a direct callback to the Suga that we met when BTS first debuted. In the lyrics, he is voicing the ambitions that led him to begin this journey in the first place, the dreams that he had when they first started. But as the first verse begins, we go back to the present and see that these dreams look more like a nightmare. In the lyrics, he says that after wondering how far he would go, he found himself here, with the shadow at his feet that grow darker as the light becomes more intense. In the video, these lines are anticipated by the shot of him on stage and surrounded by faceless people with their phones up. 
This is what BTS sees when they are on stage. It's the world, and to a certain extent, it's us as well. You see, in order to understand what Jung is talking about here, we have to think about it in context. This is shadow, so it's about the negative side of their job. It's about the loneliness, the pressure, and the anxiety that come with success. This is not to say that it's always like this, because in many other instances they openly said how great it is to be who they are. But in order to get the full picture, that is, in order to understand who BTS are as people, we have to touch on the negative aspects as well as the good. And whether we like it or not, ARMY is part of both worlds. On the one hand, there is a huge amount of people who loves them and respects them. But on the other, there's also a lot of people who touches them, disrespects them and follows them everywhere they go. This obviously applies to the press, the haters and... The use of, oh, I can only imagine like the kind of press they get or um, paparazzi is what we call it over here. People that follow you around everywhere, you know, they're just taking your pictures to sell them for money because you know or to get likes on their instagram or whatever and those people want to involve them into scandals as well and if you think about it this is actually really scary but also a part of what we call success this is the shadow that jung is referring to here it's the social anxiety that comes with the public, it's the pressure to deliver, it's the fear to disappoint people, it's the anger towards those who hate them and disrespect them. Now they are flying, but flying is terrifying because the higher they go, the more dangerous and lonely it gets. While they are surrounded by light, their perspective is distorted by fear. So the shadow engulfs them and turns into a monster. This implies that when the shadow takes over, that is, when fear overwhelms them, even the good things are seen in a negative light. And this is why he says that we shouldn't let him fly. This part of the song is actually very interesting, because visually we get a reference to RM's reflection. Here, the mics break the glass, which means that through music they are now exploring the boundaries of their identity. But when it comes to the lyrics, this line perfectly mirrors RM's line in persona that in turn says that he wants to fly. This means that while the ambition of their persona pushes them to seek success and follow their dreams, the fear associated with the shadow makes them desperate and turns their dream into a nightmare. If you look closely, in the lyrics, the shadow itself is born out of light. And this is because their job is such an important part of their identity that it defines who they are. As we see later on in the video, Shadow Yungi is part of the audience. And this is because their relationship with the outside world is such an important part of themselves that their shadow takes on the perspective of the audience itself. The fear, the anxiety and the pressure they feel comes from the opinion of the public. And this is because their persona, that is BTS, defines them more than anything else. In the second half of the song, Suga repeats once again what his dreams are. But all of a sudden, his shadow literally takes the stage and reveals the point of the entire concept. That is that the persona and the shadow are one and the same and impossible to divide. This is because the two sides are different parts of the same individual. They complete each other and cancel each other out. And as much as the persona tries to escape, the shadow will always be there no matter what. Now, at first glance, this may seem like a very negative outcome, but in reality, it is far from it. Because acknowledging that the shadow is a part of us is what we need to do in order to move on to the next step. You see, according to Jung, the goal of the map of the soul is to reach individuation, which is the process of achieving balance between the persona and the shadow through the ego. Achieving balance is the only way we can reach self-improvement, but in order to do so, we first need to accept both the positive and the negative sides of ourselves. And this is exactly what happens in the song. By acknowledging that the shadow will always be a part of Aww. him, that is, by accepting I didn't even catch the different colored eyes. That's cool. Accepting that light and success will always come with darkness and fear, Jungi is actually moving a step closer to achieving balance, thus showing us how to do the same as well. 
So that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. I like to let it play out um, because they weren't part of their videos and I don't want to cut it off. Um, like I said before, please go subscribe to Bookish Theories and X Celeste. They make great videos. Um, at least everyone I've seen so far, they've been really good. Um, great breakdowns. Lots of that I did not catch. Um, you know, I think I got the overall meaning of the song right. Um, except I didn't realize that was the shadow at the end. That's pretty cool. Um, I thought it was just him talking to the other members of BTS, but it was him talking to his shadow himself. Um, wow. Um, excuse me. You know, this, the more I go into it, like I've said, um, you know, I've known about Youngianism for a while because of Tool, but, um, I never went super deep into it. Um, the older I get, the more interested I am in it, um, which I think is probably pretty common. Um, but... The way BTS explores it, it makes you understand it better, it seems like, um, at least for me. Um, it's just, it's not often that you can listen to a song and almost get enlightened by it, if you know what I mean. Not to put too much on it. Um, but, wow. Um, you know, because, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm trying to balance my life out and live a healthier life, um, just mentally, you, you, you know, feel better about myself um and just what i'm doing and um i don't know just try to be a better person all around um and to everybody around me um and it's hard um you know because you 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 know you can't always be that way and you know i've had to accept certain things about myself i guess and certain ways i react to things i've had to think about and um yeah so i guess i can I can relate to it, not to the level of being famous and having to worry about that. Um, but I think, you know, the, the big draw of music is uh, you try to listen to the lyrics and apply it to your life. Uh, I've said that many times before. And for me, applying it to my life, it's um, disappointing other people, or at least, I guess, other people not being okay with me anymore. You know, like the people in my close life and you know like my wife and my kids and stuff um you know my friends and family um you know you know, you know I, I don't know because things happened in my past i guess i'm afraid people are always going to just be like eh dipping out you know um so i guess maybe sometimes um you know i've noticed i am more distant i guess than i should be but um you know i've tried to get better about that and stuff so you know, I know what it is to try to accept things in your shadow. Um, you know, not every person has completely good things about them. Um, you know, we all have personality traits that aren't the greatest. Um, and sometimes you have to fix it or accept it, or at least understand why you have it. Um, to at least try to accept it, to have that balance that they were talking about. And um, that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find that balance myself. Um, it's hard, you know, some days I think I have it, then other days I know I don't. Um, but I think that's just the whole process. Uh, even when you find that balance, that's the point of balance is sometimes you lose it, you know, um, and you got to find it again. Um, but yeah, I really, really love it. Uh, Interlude Shadow, amazing song. I really love these, um, explanation videos that they do, uh, that the BTS army does, um. You know, BTS fans are awesome that they create all this stuff. And, um, you know, because BTS creates this awesome content that you're able to do that with. Not too many bands now create all this, like, really deep meaning stuff and, like, visually deep stuff um, that you can interpret many different ways. A lot of it is just, like, this is what it's about, you know. Not all of it, but quite a bit of it. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited to listen to more. Um of this album, this project. Um, I don't know what the song I'm going to listen to next, um, but I'm really, really excited. Uh, so yeah, if you want me to react to any other BTS songs, Suga songs, solo songs from any other members or any other band, let me know down below in the comments. Um, and if you can, join me over on Patreon. I do a, a, re 
a request thread over there as well. Um, and I do, you know, like exclusive posts and pictures behind the scenes stuff. And you can watch these videos a day early, sometimes two days early. Um, I can't always get the videos up early. Um, and all these videos do eventually come to YouTube. Um, so I don't ever like lock up a video behind a paywall forever. Uh, but I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, just take care of yourself. Take care of others. Take it easy.